Paul from Alexandria Knife Sharpening Laser Engraving. So I've had some questions about venting the lasers and I also always get a lot of questions, people asking about, do I have concerns about dust with the metal grinding and everything? So let's get into that. I'm gonna to talk to you about my safety things that I do in my shop to keep my lungs safe. And I'm gonna show you what I've also found that's the most dangerous stuff and what's the not so dangerous stuff uh, from my testing. And let's just get into it. All right, everybody. So I'm gonna start with the knife sharpening side of the shop. So if you're only here for laser engraving, I will time code it and jump into when we start talking about venting the lasers and that stuff. Uh, but at first, let's just start with the knife sharpening. So in my shop, I have a couple different things that I do to keep the particulates down, to try and keep the air safe. One of the first ones a lot of people notice is this downdraft table. So the downdraft table is hooked to this big giant uh, jet dust collector over here. This big bag is basically a giant air filter and that is, uh, I believe it's a five micron I have on there. So that will filter up to a five micron particulates out of the air. And it collects everything down there in the bottom of the bag. It's good for uh, wood and it's, it's pretty good for, for metal. Um, but I will tell you, my experience with metal is it generally tends to fall kind of straight down because it's heavy. So when if you're grinding wood, you can get much more airborne dust particles that are dangerous but you should always take precautions so the only time I don't wear a mask and I, I probably should and I could voice over it but it is really when I make videos for you guys so I won't wear a mask and when I'm grinding and so I can stop and talk to you um, but basically when that's not going on even with a downdraft table I still wear a mask so and i have a couple masks over here uh this is the one i pretty much wear most of the time is this one i replace the filters monthly on it it's a 3m i've shown this one before it's a drop down mask which i like because i can easily take it down to talk to people if a customer comes in and then over here i have another 3m mask but this one's uh got higher quality filters on it so these filters are for uh smoke and gas and noxious fumes and things. And I'll tell you, I'll get to this uh, later why I have this. I don't usually have to wear this for knife sharpening stuff, but I have worn it if I've been etching blades because the acid from that stuff is pretty nasty uh, to breathe. And especially if it's not like weather where I can have the garage doors open and things, I will wear a mask if I'm etching, late, uh, if I'm etching knives with acid because I don't want to breathe that stuff in. All right. Uh, the, another thing I've shown before, I have a shop air filter. It's up top here. It uh, takes the air in on the one side and blows clean air out on the other side. Uh, yes, it goes way up top in the middle of the room. That's where you are supposed to put these things. Uh, that was one thing I learned when I was researching them that I uh, didn't no, uh, but I, that I found out. So you can see it's kind of dead middle in the room and its purpose is to filter out that stuff that really gets airborne and up in the air, the really fine, fine particulate. That's job is to grab it. And that's got a, a HEPA filter in there. And that's, you know, it's pretty important. And I use that. So I will run that. Uh, especially if I'm grinding wood and doing certain things. And I will also use that at times with the laser. Um, over here, I have a scoop, which goes into the same system. You can see down here, I have little uh, vent valves so I can shut certain things off. Uh, when I polish and grind over here, a lot of times this stuff really makes a lot of dust. So I will still 
wear a mask, but I will also, just to keep the dust and things down, uh, do it in front of this giant scoop to let that suck most of the dust up there. Oh, you know what? Let's not forget this. This is an important one too, because this is a big mistake people make. And I actually just cleaned mine out yesterday, but I want to show you inside of my shop vac, I have a bag. You can see it's nice and clean because I just did it yesterday, but I also have a HEPA filter. And that's really important because you don't want to be blowing the stuff back into the air. And if you're sucking up fine metal dust, fine wood dust, and you only have a regular shop vac filter in there, you're basically throwing that really dangerous stuff. It will go right through the shop vac and come out the exhaust. It's just too fine for the filter to get it. So I highly recommend that you purchase a HEPA filter. And you saw how clean my HEPA filter looked. That's because I also use the shop bag in there. So the majority of the junk is going to go into that bag. It's not over dirtying up that HEPA filter. And it, you know, the HEPA filter then only has the job of grabbing super fine particulate that might get into the air and you will get a really long life out of that HEPA filter. That HEPA filter in, that's in there is probably now getting close to two years old, and you can see it is very still very clean. But just an extra precaution that you can take just to make sure you're not, you know, you think you're cleaning your shop, but you're throwing dangerous stuff in there. You don't want to be doing that. All right, so now I'm going to switch to... Let's talk about the lasers. I'm going to show you one other thing uh, that I do have in here. So this right here, this little monitor, and this is how I've tested some of these things. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me go back to one other thing on sharpening because this comes up a lot with the Tormex. So a lot of people ask me, you know, Paul, why don't you, why don't you grind in water and it's safer? Aren't you concerned about the metal dust? And you can see... You know, there is a good bit of metal dust. You can see it right here. I mean, look, that's a good bit. What I have found is that the Tormex at 90 RPMs do not throw a lot of dangerous metal up and into the air that you're going to end up breathing it. Now, if you're using it in water, you don't have to really worry about it at all because the water catches all of it. But even grinding dry, so a lot of people ask me about, you know, grinding dry. I have run my air quality checker, and this is a real-time air quality checker. So on here, it tells me, so you can see on the bottom, it's kind of got a graph. Green means it's good, and, it, you know, if it starts going up, yellow, and then red means it's dangerous. And this actually has a little... Uh, alarm in it and if it gets dangerous in here this will go off i have run this right on top here to see if it's dangerous and i have never had it go off now that still doesn't mean i don't wear a mask when i sharpen i do just to be on the safe side but i have not had it i have not had this go off i have also run this over here by my one by 30s Again, I have not had it go off. Now, what has set this off? When I clean this, sometimes I will grab my air compressor over there and blow. And that blow, the, when I start blowing that, this thing goes off very quickly. But actual just uh, grinding of knives and sharpening doesn't have that same reaction. Like it's really when I go to clean this table, uh, that downdraft table pulls most of the stuff down and it really catches most of it. So I don't have a whole lot of fear there of, of breathing stuff in. Now let's talk about the lasers. This is uh, laser number one. This is my laser pecker four. You can see it's in an enclosure. It has a vent out the back, which I run out the shop door, out a pet door, and out into the backyard when I use that one. Uh, this one I'm actually getting ready. 
I'm probably going to move this inside my house into my office inside of my house into a different enclosure because I want to make this one for doing uh, tumblers most of the time. And I'm going to actually take it out of the shop. This is my most portable laser that I own. But I would say it's very important to vent your lasers. Absolutely is. So if you're getting into it or thinking about it, one of the things that's a little misleading, if you watch YouTube videos and uh, the commercials for X-Tool and Laser Pecker and a lot of these things, you would think that you could, you know, bring this thing out and use it in your kitchen. You can't. You won't want to. They Lasers make fumes. Lasers make dust depending on what you're doing and it can be very dangerous dust now as i've said that this thing can go off with a little bit of siren and let you know like hey it's dangerous in here the only thing that has ever set my air quality checker off has been when i have forgotten to open up my outside vent for my lasers one time i was burning uh, cutting board engravings in the Creality Falcon 2 and my X-Tool S1 at the same time. I had forgot to turn on the fan over here that sucks everything outside. And within a very short period of time, I mean, we're, pro we're talking only a minute or two, this went right to the dangerous and started going beep, 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 beep. And I turned around and I literally, I was only like a minute into engraving and I could see all the smoke. This was in the red zone. What you see here are different particulate sides. So there's uh, PM 2.5, PM 1.0 and PM 10. The, the lowest ones, the uh, 2.5s are extremely dangerous. These are things that you can breathe in and my understanding of that is is that they can go directly into your bloodstream uh, so you never want to see that really high and if it is you need to have some type of protection on so that's a other reason why i have this mask when that happened and this started going off the very first thing i did was i took this mask out and i put it on because this is for smoke fine particulate, fumes, all kinds of stuff. So I immediately put this on, made sure I turned the vent back on, and it took a few minutes, but then eventually everything, this went back down, everything got to the safe level. But I think these are a great idea to have in your shop, whether if you're doing woodworking, also highly recommend it for people doing laser engraving and laser stuff. Because like I said, I really thought, it would be all my wood, tur wood turning, uh, grinding tools that would set this off more. And it's not. It's actually the engravers. So, you know, keep in mind, a laser is vaporizing stuff. It is making it into super fine particulate. And if that, for some reason, isn't venting properly, you could be breathing that in and you don't want to breathe that in. So I have taken a, a lot of effort to vent my... Uh, different lasers and I'll show you what I did here. So I added an extra inline fan. So you'll see back here these are four inch vents. Now this typically came with a three inch but I got a special coupling for my S1. Uh, that one still has three inches on it but it goes into a, uh, a joiner here and I can close that valve down and only pull from the S1, or I can open it up and pull from both lasers at the same time. They come down here, go up this wall, and go to this. And this is an inline vent fan. So this thing's pulling even more suction, and it, then it blows it right outside and outside of my shop. That goes all the way through the wall to an outside vent. And that's how I vent my lasers. So... If you're going to get in the lasers, definitely think about where you're going to have it and how you're going to vent it. So like I said, I'm getting ready to move the one into my office and I ordered a window vent kit and you can use vent kits that are uh, typically like this would be for like a, a dryer. 
Uh, they're totally fine. You can use a dryer vent kit with the vents on the one side that open up when it starts blowing. And adding an inline vent fan is fantastic. It's, it, it's the way to go. Now I'll show you uh, something I have. I actually haven't even unpacked it yet. I just got it. But this is for my laser pecker that I showed you here. This is their filter unit. And if you can't vent outside, they do make filters. And that's what this little machine is here. So this will clean the air. And if you have to blow it back into the room that you're in, you can use this. Now, I got it because I definitely wanted to have it. And also got it in case I needed to go on location somewhere where I couldn't vent something outside. I wanted to have a unit that I could take and make it safe for wherever it was, whether, you know. So something like this is a good idea. You know, if you lived in an apartment and you wanted to get into having a laser. Now, I have never used this, so I can't speak for, you know, how great it is. My understanding from what I've heard from other people is that you will still get some of the smells. Now, certain things smell great. When I engrave my cutting boards that I do, and you can see over here, I got all this, you know, lots of wood. I got cedar and uh, this is walnut and all kinds of wood. This stuff smells great. It never bothers me if I'm cutting a, wooding board, uh, a wood cutting board. It's, it smells fantastic. The thing that smells terrible is acrylic. So if you're um, engraving or cutting things like acrylic, here's some acrylic garden stakes uh, that I had cut out. This stuff smells terrible. It smells like a nail salon when you cut it. So there are things and smells and things you have to deal with. Number one option, if you can vent it outside, vent it outside. So if you're gonna put it in your house, if you have a window, if there's, if you can, if you can put an outside vent, I'll show you, and let's step outside. I'll just show you the outside vent. So there's my outside vent. And that's how I get the fumes out of my house so I, that I don't have to smell them or of my shop. So those are just things to consider, but I think it's well worthwhile. And then the other thing I recently did was I raised up, and I'm actually still some making some modifications to this. I raised the height of my tent up on the Creality Falcon 2 because it kept hitting the camera. And so I'm building out some the platform because I wanted to raise that tent up. And what I'm gonna have to do here is I'm gonna seal uh, this wood on the bottom with some silicone sealant. And I still haven't even put the front piece in yet. Um, but that fan sucks so strong, that inline vent fan. When I run that inline vent fan, even without a piece on the front here, if this is zipped up, it won't set off the uh, detector. It's still drawing everything out. So that's why the inline fan is well worth it. If you can put one in, I'm gonna get one for my office for the unit that I'm gonna put in there because I do, I am gonna try and vent it all outside. Like I said, even though I have the unit from Laser Pecker where I could do it in there, I would just much rather have it go completely outside than in my shop. And that's it. So that's my update on uh, air filter, air quality stuff. I will put a link uh, to this uh, monitor so that uh, if you're interested in getting something like this, like I said, I think this is well worth it. it I originally picked this up when I started with my diesel heater, which I've shown you um, in other videos. I wanted to be sure that I wa there was no carbon dioxide or carbon uh, monoxide, not dioxide, uh, coming in the shop. Uh, one of the reasons I liked this detector is because it's not just an air quality detector, but it also does have uh, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, which a lot of them don't have. This one has both. It has uh, TVOX, which is your volatile gases, which come from mostly cleaning products and things like that. And then it has the three particulate size that you need to be concerned with, with dust and things floating around in your shop. The battery lasts a really long time when it's charged up. It will run... Uh, 
almost like two days. It's a very, very long run time. And if it does go off, you can silence it. You hit the, uh, the top button here twice and it will stop beeping uh, because that can happen. And sometimes it can take a while for that air to get back to good quality. So uh, it is nice to be able to silence it if you're gonna throw a mask on or something like that. And then the other option is you can always put this outside too to help clear it out uh, sooner. If it's still going off for a while and taking a while to clear the particulate out of the air. Uh, but just know that, yeah, it does have a silence button. You, you click it two times. And actually, if you take a look there, let me see. Yeah, so you can see up by the battery, that's the speaker. If I click it two times, now I'll turn the speaker off. I click it two times and now I'll turn it back on. If that anything in there reaches dangerous level, that thing starts starts beeping. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'll put a link to um, this mask, this mask, <laughs> this detector, and anything else that I can think of that might be related to this in the description of the video. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the uh, content and everything on this channel. Have a great day, everybody. I hope uh, that answered anyone's questions. Uh, there's been a lot coming in lately about that, so hopefully we knocked it out for both of you. Uh, those that are interested in the laser engraving, those are interested in knife sharpening, and a lot of you are a combination like me uh, that do both. Uh, and that's how you can address both those issues at the same time in your shop. <laughs>